Okay, wait till nighttime, and here we go again. Oh my gosh. No, 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 I don't want to die. Jeez. What am I, on hard mode? Hey guys, Profe Pablo here, Spanish teacher turned Minecraft engineer. Today, we are working on an infinite golden apple farm. Now, this thing has a lot of components to it. Uh, it is not an easy build, but if you can get this thing going, trust me, it'll be well, well worth it. Let me go over the different parts of this build. So first of all, the way that this build works, um, you guys have probably seen this in other videos of mine or someone else's. Uh, this is a zombified piglin farm. You just kill them here, get tons of XP, and all of their stuff goes down here. Now, a lot of places uh, just have it going into a chest. We actually have ours going into a storage silo, which filters down going into an item sorter so that we get rotten flesh, gold nuggets, gold ingots, and over here we get um, where all the swords go and those swords get smelted down into more nuggets. Back here we have a fueling station which is going to fuel these furnaces because you're going to be using a lot of fuel to smelt that stuff down. And what we have over here are two different kinds of villagers that have been healed from zombies. Here we have a cleric uh, he's already upped his prices on me. They will go back down eventually. He starts off trading one piece of rotten flesh for an emerald. We get so much rotten flesh in this thing, it really doesn't matter anyway. And then you have this farmer uh, who trades you apples. Then you simply come over here where you have your station, where you turn your gold nuggets into gold ingots. And then you take those ingots and apples to make golden apples. You're going to have more than enough resources to make tons and tons of golden apples using this. Golden apples can be used for your own health, and they can be used to heal more zombie villagers. Enough chit chat, let's get building. Okay, the first thing that you want to do is wait till sunrise or sunset see which direction the sun is coming up and that's the east zombified piglins spawn on either the east side or the south side of a portal so we know that if i have a portal here they will spawn on this side towards the rising sun uh, or they will spawn to the right which is south we're going to build ours to the south so this part over here is going to be the front of our build We're gonna start with the shaft that the zombified piglins fall down and where we kill them. So uh, let's go ahead and place a dropper here facing up. And then on top of that, another dropper facing up. Down in this bottom dropper, you're going to crouch, place a hopper, come back, place a hopper, come back one more, place another hopper. Then going into those hoppers, you're going to place one hopper, one hopper. This is going to be the kill chamber. Grab some slabs of your choice Place them down here, 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 and here over these four hoppers. Now we need a clock that reads when these droppers are full. So we're gonna place a comparator here, a repeater, redstone, 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 redstone. And then we're going to come over here and do redstone, redstone, and then place a repeater going back in to the bottom dropper. Now, whenever something enters there, it's going to pop out up here. Now take a solid block of your choice, place one here, and then back here, you're gonna place another one and another one, and we are going to use the rest to cover up our redstone because we don't want that getting wet and being destroyed. Okay, we might even this out later so that it's symmetrical, but for now, this'll do. Now we are going to build a tower going up. Go ahead and build that tower about 20 blocks high. If you make it too high, the zombified piglins will fall to their death and you won't be able to kill them for XP. If you make it too low, you'll have to just 
stand here and be slashing a lot with the sword. So we're gonna make ours 20 high. After you build the sides, go ahead and build the back. And I put a couple here on the sides as well. Okay, on the front, we are going to want to put glass, put a temporary block, put a block here. You need a slit here so that you can be um, hitting some five piglins through and build that up to the top. Okay, again, that's the tube that the zombified piglins are gonna fall down and you will kill them here. Their stuff will go over here and then it will pop out right here. Okay, now let's work on the portal. Grab a solid block of your choice, come over here to this side and build out eight blocks. On top of the eighth block, put a block. Do the same thing on this side. Then build out the side so that you have a trough. Take a water bucket, place it here on the end. And just a suggestion, don't build this build in a snowy biome because the water will freeze up here uh, and that'll stop the trough from working. Over here on the back, we're going to build a back wall and build a couple here to the side. And then this front part, I like to put glass so I can see that everything's working okay. Okay, over here, I'm going to start building my portal. I'm gonna use obsidian here, all along this back wall. Then I'm going to build 20 blocks high. You might wanna do this with scaffolding. Every time I build one of these in survival, I end up falling and dying. Go ahead and finish off your portal. Okay, now this part can be super tricky, so please pay attention carefully and do it just like I do. Come to the back of the build, place three blocks, grab a dispenser, place it on this block facing in towards the nether portal. Come behind the dispenser, place an observer facing in right there, and then an observer facing that observer. It's going to create a repeater clock and then you can put a bucket of water on the inside. Should start doing that. This will help turn the portal off, and now we need to find a way to turn the portal on. Come over to this corner, place a slab of your choice right there. Next, place a solid block, uh, cannot be wood, right there. Go ahead and come underneath those. Place a block here, 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 and here. Place an observer here, facing towards the blocks, place another one here, facing that way, come on top and place one, two, three, four, five observers facing down. Come over here, place a button here and here, take glass, build a column all the way up to the top of the observers, come over here, place a temporary block, and grab trap doors, place one there. It should be level with the top of this block. Crouch, place another one below it, if I can get it. All the way down. Break the temporary block, place another column of glass right here, going up. And then you're going to place one here as well, but you need to build a little, and then put lava right there. Build a little more, place lava there, build a little more. Oh, I forgot, I can place one more lava bucket right there to make it even faster. Okay, I use stone buttons, you need to use wood buttons. That actually made a difference. Your portal should start turning off and on, and that's how you know it's working. Now, you want to turn this thing off <laughs> so that you don't get lag, so place a solid block right there. That'll stop the portal. Uh, this part is particularly tricky. Um, if you have problems with this, feel free to take a video and put it in the description below and I'll take a look at it. Uh, but build this exactly like I showed you. Make sure the buttons are wood and you'll be good to go. Now we need a way to turn this whole thing off and on. 
I suggest coming down here close to this column. Come one behind where the chute is, where they come down, and one over from the side, and build a column of blocks all the way up to the top. Place a piston, and then below that piston, come down and place a redstone torch. That should make the piston go forward. You can break this block now, come down, place another torch, and you're going to do every other block all the way down until the bottom. That piston turns this portal off. Okay, over here I'm just going to build out my platform a little more. And I'm going to put a lever right there, turning this thing off and on. Okay, now we have the portal that turns off and on. It's time to do the storage silo. Okay, now it is time for the back item elevator. Come to the back, place your solid block. You can go as high as you want. Uh, I'm gonna go just a little bit higher. Okay, I did mine 15 high. Going to do one here. And then lastly, one here. Now, this one actually needs to be one, two less than these two. Take a bucket of water, place it here. Now, this next part you can do without kelp. It's just easier with kelp. But if you dive down, place down a dirt block, take your kelp, plant kelp all the way up to the top. That makes all of those source blocks. Then dive down, break your kelp, break your block, and lay down soul sand. From there, take a couple temporary blocks, place one there and there. Come over to this side, place one hopper there, and then add a chest here and here, like that. After that, you could break this dirt, and every other block, you can add another double chest. Honestly, your build probably will never fill up this much, but better safe than sorry. Come all the way down until you have three blocks left at the bottom, or four, and then stop. Come back up here, place down some hoppers, and there's your silo. Now come back up here to the top, place a solid block here, 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 and then all the way like this, making a mini trough. Then place a water bucket here and here. Make sure the water is flowing this way and then close it off. Okay, now it is time for the sorting system. Take this end of this chest, follow it all the way down, and come over one, two, three, four, five, six, seven blocks. Build this up until it would be right underneath this chest. Then take hoppers, place one going into that column, come all the way back until you're underneath this chest. Okay, come over to this column, come down one below this, two, three. This is gonna be the floor where your chests are going to go. Build three rows here, come over one hopper here, place a double chest here, skip a row, double chest, skip a row, double chest. Should look like this. Come back here and behind each of these chests, place another hopper. Now on this side, you're going to do redstone. So get a column and place it on the same level as these hoppers. Then come over one, two, and then on this last one, you're going to need to build it one below that, right here, three. Behind each one of these hoppers, you will need to place a comparator. And then I'm actually going to break these rows in between those hoppers. You need to come down here, place a block here, and I'm just gonna fill in the floor right there. So you have a T underneath this comparator, and it's sitting on top of a platform. It's gonna 
change from build to build depending on uh, the ground. There we go. Then take a repeater, place it here in that slot, here, here. You'll need redstone torches here, here, and right here as well. Then take redstone, come one, two, and the third one should drop down here. Let me break these blocks so I can explain to you this clock. If you've done item sorters before, you've seen this. Redstone signal comes out, powering on this, and turning off this torch, causing this hopper to move. Redstone, redstone, redstone here, and here as well. Place a hopper here going into this comparator, hopper here going into that comparator, and a hopper going into that one. Now you need a placeholder block, any kind of block that will never pass through this system. I'm going to use grass path blocks because they're easy to get, and you never sort those. You're gonna fill one, two, three, four, and then go all the way up to 41 in this first slot. Do that on all of these hoppers. Okay, now in each one of these sorters, you will need to put a different kind of item. In this one, place two gold nuggets. One, two. In this one, place two gold ingots. One, two. Notice that one goes through the system and one stays here. In this one, two pieces of rotten flesh. One, two. This is not critical, but if you want to, you can label each one of these by putting an item frame and then one of the items in each. Okay, the only problem is there's one more item that passes through this system, and it is the golden swords. We are going to smelt those down. Place a double chest here on the end. Skip a column. Place two furnaces. Gonna break these blocks. Place two hoppers going in. Like that. Place a double chest here. I'm gonna place mine a little in front. Yours can be directly underneath. Place two hoppers going into that chest. Now all we need is fuel for these furnaces. Place a hopper here in the back and here. And a double chest. And you can put all of your fuel in there which will fuel these two furnaces. But why stop there when we can have a charcoal farm as well? We're gonna make a little mini charcoal farm to fuel this thing. Place one hopper that goes into this chest. Place a furnace on top. Come over here to the side and place some blocks that go all the way up to the same level as these hoppers. Place a dropper facing up and another dropper facing up. Place a hopper going into that dropper. So one's going into this chest, one's going into this dropper. Place your next furnace. Then come behind this, place a hopper here, and a hopper here, because we are going to need charcoal coming back and making more charcoal. Place a chest, and a chest, oops. And a chest, oops. <laughs> there we go. And then a hopper going into that, and a hopper going into that. Stuff from this dropper will go back in here. Half of the charcoal will be used for making more charcoal, and half of it will come down here into this system. Now we need to detect when there is charcoal here so that it pushes it up through these droppers. Let's do one, two there, one, two, three, one, two, three. That should work. My old faithful clock, here we come. Comparator, repeater, redstone, 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 repeater. You can cover that up if you want. I already have so much redstone back here, I don't really care. I forgot to put where you put in the logs. So put in a double chest here, a double chest here. Take these logs, throw them in here and then take at least one log and put one here and 
here. That should be enough to start this thing. Okay, all my charcoal seems to be going into one side for now. I'm okay with that. Um, eventually, it'll fill up both. Okay, this furnace is working, making more gold nuggets for us. Now, one last thing on this part of the build. Uh, sometimes I've noticed that it moves so fast that these hoppers don't have time to sort. So if you want to, you can slow that down, you take some blocks, and next to this hopper, you build up the level of the hopper, build a T, just like that, break the T, and actually you're going to have to build some blocks here so that it doesn't connect to this clock. Come over to this side, place down a redstone torch, place down a repeater pointing away, give it a couple of clicks, and then do redstone dust. What that's doing is turning this hopper off and on, but it's slowing the speed down. So it's gonna sort slower, but that way you don't get zombie meat or gold clogging up these furnaces. Okay, that is it for this part of the build. On to the next part. Okay, now it's time for the last part of this build. That is going to be chambers where we heal zombie villagers and trade with them to get what we need. I'm going to build some blocks this way. Going to build up one, two, three, four. Build that across. Okay, this is gonna be the front of our build. Now, this middle area over here is going to be for zombies. So I'm going to make a square like that. I'm going to build that up here to the roof. You can make this as large or as small as you want. I'm gonna come over here, place a block there, and that is our little holding cell for zombies, zombie villagers. All I really need over here is a trap door. I'm actually gonna put this block here and put the trap door here. And then I'm going to build some blocks up and put some stairs down, making it easy for them to follow me into the trap. Now I'm gonna go ahead and finish this part off making it kind of like a little house. If you don't want to be cruel, you can give your villager some windows. You just want to make sure he's safe. We even add a skylight here. All we need in here is a bed and a workstation, which we will put down as soon as we get a zombie villager. I'm gonna make these trap doors so that I can get to him. So when the store's open, I'll just open these, trade with the dude, at nighttime, I can close them. There we go. Okay, find a spot where zombie villagers have appeared. Now, remember, you can find these guys. Oh my goodness, phantom. That's what I get for not sleeping. Okay, let's try that again. Okay, find a spot where there are zombie villagers. I'm just spawning one in. Ow, he's already killing me. And come over here. They will fall right down into the hole. Okay, I did not see that coming, but our zombie villager actually didn't survive. We need a roof. If you don't have a roof, the sun burns them. So unless you're healing them at night. There we go. You know what? This is kind of cool. It looks like a tower. Yeah. I like that. Okay, we're trying again. Ow. These guys hit hard. Come up here falls into the trap. You can either heal him now or wait till day. Then you hit him with an arrow of weakness, give him a golden apple, and he will start healing. Now, actually, what I'm going to do is place an iron door over here so I can get in and out. Let's see, we'll need a solid block here. I'm actually going to place this button over here. There we go. Okay, it takes a couple of minutes for this guy to heal. We'll wait. Okay, he is healed. Let's come over. What we'll do is break these blocks so he can get over here. And then we will take a workstation and lay it down. We want him to be a farmer. And we want him to trade apples. So if he doesn't trade apples the first time, break it. Lay it down again. He'll reconnect. 
no apples. Do that until you get, until you see apples. There we go. Good. So now we have our guy who will make apples and we can come over here and trade with him whenever we want or just go in the iron door, it doesn't matter. Now let's make another house where we are going to have three clerics. We're gonna build it in the same style as the other house. And you know what, if you have enough iron, you can make iron doors here for the holding cell. Um, we're actually just gonna put blocks so that now our zombie villagers come this way. I'm going to lay down one, two, three beds, and one, two, three brewing stands. Okay, another thing I forgot to mention, of course, is uh, you definitely want to light up these rooms. What I like to do is place a little workstation, so I have a crafting table and one more chest where I keep my golden apples. Okay, and once that is done, you're ready to go. I've switched over to survival, notice my XP. Let's go ahead and do this thing. Okay, once you have a little bit of supplies, come over here, grab your rotten flesh, start trading with the clerics. All right, if they're not close enough to the window, I'm gonna have to go in. Okay, once I have some emeralds from the rotten flesh, come over here. We're gonna trade bread until he levels up. Now we can get apples. Then we can come back here, grab some gold, and make gold apples. Okay, I'm not sure exactly what happened, but we had some escape artists here who got in the furnace. Maybe that happens when I close the game, um, but just take those out and they start smelting again. Let's make a few more apples. We can also take the nuggets and make ingots. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed this infinite golden apple farm. Uh, <laughs> obviously it's more than just that. You get tons of XP, tons of gold. Um, but I hope you enjoyed this build. Thanks for watching.